what is really money cometh? And, and why did the father make money cometh? Because he wanted to show forth his glory and what he could do and accomplish. Money cometh is the power of God increasing you on earth. Money cometh is the power of God increasing you on earth. Taking you to the next degree of finances. Taking you to the next degree of abundance. Money cometh is a place in your life where the Lord becomes more strict. He voices his requirements to you because he already knows that he's going to give you plenty of money, plenty of provision, and he wants your mind to be up to par with that level of riches. Why does God teach you differently when there's a money cometh anointing on you? Because if your brain doesn't come underneath the proper submission to his truth, you'll go right back to stealing from God, robbing God. You'll affect God with how you spend that money. You'll hurt him because the money will go into people that God doesn't want to put money into them. You'll be buying them clothes and God don't want to buy them no clothes. You'll be buying them shoes. God don't want to buy them no shoes. Do you know that God don't want to take everybody shopping? Money cometh is a dimension of the father's power. Where he sits his economy and government on your shoulders. Remember uh, Isaiah chapter nine talked about how the government of God shall be upon the shoulders of King Jesus. Well, in money cometh, the Lord pits his government on your shoulders. In money cometh, the government of God is now on your shoulders and he loads you with benefits daily. The person with the money cometh anointing could still produce no money cometh. Because if you violate that all that you have, it's like you don't even have it. You won't ever see it come to full fruition. You'll never see it show up in full totality because you can violate the money cometh anointing. Dishonor is Satan attempting To fill your schedule with things that decrease your interest in God. Dishonor is Satan attempting to fill your schedule with things that increase your disinterest in God. You're, you lose your interest. Because you're occupied with all these things that are blood sucking activities. They are vampires To the fire, the passion, the zeal that God gives you to serve him, for him. So while, you, while, while the schedule is filled with all these things, you're losing power. You're losing grace. You're losing humility. Remember, God resists the proud. He gives grace to the humble. So he resists the proud. The more proud you become, the more proud you become, the more proud you become, the more you become proud, the more you're losing. You're losing grace, which means the ability of God start to wean off you. Remember, I was telling you here, Peter walking on the water and then he started losing grace. He losing ability. He started to sink. He lost the ability. Then he cried out and asked Jesus to help him. Jesus pulled him up. He lost the ability because pride. And that shows you one of the major things about pride is his wrong focus. Because he started focusing on the winds and the waves and the storm. The same way there's satanic winds that come to stop you from getting to money coming. That's why Ecclesiastes chapter 11 talking about he that observes the 
the, 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 the winds, he will not sow. And he that observed the clouds, he will not reap. So there are clouds that Satan have scheduled for everybody so that you'll never see money come and happen in your life. So that you'll never see it, you'll never taste of it, you'll never experience it. So that that financial dimension of God will be withheld from you. What really withholds the financial realm of God, the riches realm of God from people? They don't walk uprightly. They're crooked. When you are crook, you can't get the wealth that's promised in the book. Psalm 84 said, no good thing will he withhold from those that walk uprightly. So many people never get to the riches realm of God because they're crooked. What does it mean to be crooked? God reveals something to you and you operate different to what he revealed. You don't live the pattern and the script that he called you to play in the movie. You want to play somebody else's script. You want to take their lines and speak it. You want to act their part, but you don't want to act the part that God gave you. There's promotion that cometh to the sower in the seed. And the seed, it graduates into a money cometh move of God in your life. The money cometh move of God is where the Holy Spirit and angels are both operating together. They're tag teaming and they're talking to investors. They're talking to human flesh on earth and pitting them in your path to bless you. Money cometh is not the set income that you receive at your job. It is promotion that come from God. So the promotion is carrying people, places, and things that elevate you. Where could you find the investors of Isaac when he's in this famine in Genesis 26? Nowhere. Because money cometh is now in operation. It has nothing to do with the natural realm. It's coming from the Lord, and the Lord is making it happen through the earth realm to get to Isaac. That's the power. When money cometh is working, you don't always need point A and point B. Money cometh will work from point A to point M, and then point Z, then go back to point T, then go back to point C. And you're like, wait, 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 wait. How am I getting from one season to the next, one blessing to the next? And you don't understand there's a financial anointing on you. And so God is dealing with you in a supernatural manner to get his plan in full effect for you. Many times people have been risen up from being poor. And when the Lord places money cometh on them, they become rich. And see, he has to train you and give you wisdom so that you don't place that money that he gives to you in the wrong hands. You want to help everybody because they pop up in your life because they know that you got money. If you didn't have no money, you wouldn't see them pop up. Them niggas would not pop up if they knew that you ain't had no money. You got to recognize people that pop up in your life because they know you got money. If you if they don't know that you got no money, you ain't going to see them. So why would you bless somebody like that? You think that God sending you to bless somebody like that that's up there? They, they, if you was poor and you was in the shelter and you was on crack, okay, you wouldn't see them nowhere. They pop up because they know that you got money and then you up there think that you assigned to them. That's why God got to train you in money cometh because thieves cometh when money cometh. Fake folks, fake friends, fake admirers, all of a sudden they admire you. Where was you at? I, I don't know you. I don't know who you is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah I, no, I don't know who you is. I don't know you. Me and you don't laugh and talk. We, we, how all of a sudden you pop up? You want to play friend and buddy? Tell us, let's eat together. How come you ain't want to eat with me when I was poor? You didn't want to eat with me when I was going through it. You didn't want to eat with me 
when I was living in the Roach Motel. But now all of a sudden come my car shining and it's nice. My teeth shining and it's white. <laughs> now all of a sudden you up there, you interested in me. No, you interested in this money. Because you ain't got none. Which are broke out. When money come, if happens to a person, you going to have people pop up that God didn't send for you to help, but they're going to present themselves like they help material. They're going to present their situation to you. You're going to see them talking about, I'm going through this. Well, go through it. Go through it then. Well, I need to know, am I your God? Why you want to tell me all your problems? Why you want to tell me all the bills you owe? Why you want to tell me all the issues you're going through? How come you don't go down the street and talk to the homeless man and tell him about your issues? Because you don't think he could solve it, huh? You got to recognize that money coming is not going to happen to you for everybody. I'm going to say this and I'm going to say it with a loud voice. Money cometh happen so that you could bless your man of God. Money cometh so that you could bless your man of God. When I started increasing in money, I kept my covenant with the man of God that helped me out, Dr. Mike Murdoch. I kept my covenant with him. Been sowing into him for years. It ain't gonna stop. Everybody has a man of God that been with you from the beginning teaching you and laboring for you. Even when you do them wrong, even when you leave them, even when you wrong them, they still right there teaching you and blessing you with revelation. They are laboring for you. And God cannot release his wealth on nobody that misses him disguised in a the body. There's no reason for you to move and money cometh if you can't recognize that God is hiding in human flesh, talking to you, if you can't see him there, why are he going to place a financial wave of wealth, a tsunami of blessing, a tsunami of wealth on you? For what? Because it's going to go right back into the satanic kingdom because you don't even discern God in the flesh. God living in a physical body. The Bible said, believe his prophet, so shall you prosper. The Holy Spirit gives you the prophet so that the prosperity will happen. So money cometh is profit activated. The prophet going to come. And if you could see that God not only is in the prophet, but God is playing as the prophet that's when money cometh explodes. You can't tell me nothing. There's, there's women and men in my ministry right now. They know who I am. They treat me with respect. They never had a dinner with me face to face. They never got me to come to their city. They never came to my city and they prospering. You know why? Because they believe me. You folk that don't believe me, I feel bad for you. Because you keep going around in circles like, like, like a chicken with his head cut off. Let me go. Let me go. No, nah, I ain't going to do it because it's, <laughs> it's too much. You run around like a chicken with your head cut off with all this wealth and money moving. It's moving for people that's not, that, that, that ain't missing the mark. You know, sometimes people are like, you know, it's not working for me. It's not working for me. No. But then we pit somebody that is working for. And then we pit another person that is working for. And then we pit another person that is working for. And then we pit another person that is working for. So then what can you say? The prophet coming to your life 
And if you treat them with love and with care and with hospitality and generosity and you help them out and you love on them and you pleasure them. And how do you pleasure them? You believe their doctrine. That's how you pleasure them. You act in response to their doctrine. That's how you pleasure them. You help them out to deliver the doctrine in the highest level of excellency. Every time you bless your man of God, you're helping them out. I'm looking at all this stuff that's hooked up around me right now. I got all this stuff hooked up. I told you how Makai and my sons, they hooked all this stuff up. But Makai was the mastermind. And I told you, they hooked all this stuff up. Microphones. We got all these microphones. Look, I, I don't want to open all this stuff. God, uh, it can affect the sound. But I got all these different mics, all these different microphones all over. I, I want to show you this. All right, microphones, microphones. There, there's mics in here. Mics. Got, got cords, all type of stuff hooked up all over the place. But see, I'm able to do this because you bless me. If you don't bless me, how am I going to do it? Got monitors. So when you bless your prophet, the prosperity plan of God starts to work for you on earth. And people are sent by the father's power. To prosper you like you prospered him. Taking care of your man of God brings money cometh in intensity. There is abundance of money and abundance of provision and favor that looses itself in the life of the person that's taking care of their one prophet. I'm not talking about no five prophets. I'm not talking about no ten prophets. I'm not talking about no two prophets. It don't work like that. It don't work like that. God is not the author of confusion. He didn't tell Elisha, you listen to Elijah, but you also receive the anointing for every prophet that's in the land. No, he told Elijah, go anoint Elisha in your place, not in the places of the prophet. These people that stuck to their one prophet, Joshua was not serving no five men of God talking about this was this was my father in the year 2012. This was my father in the year 2000. How, you, it's impossible even in the natural to have five fathers. So you t listen, five men can go with your 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 mama right now. But I bet you that if you do a DNA test, only one person produce that seed. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? You ever watch the show Maury? On Maury, them woman be hoeing around. Got 17 folks entering into them. And you know what happened? When Maury called out the, 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 the father, is only one man. Wait, there was 17 though. How? Because only one produced and became the father of the child. Father is one, not five and not two. This is my father when I was younger, but now this is my father today. No, no, no. Oftentimes you be meeting John the Baptist. John the Baptist be God God, God going to bring you right into the one that's mightier than John the Baptist and place you where you're supposed to be. But most times you even get with John the Baptist because you, you just you, you just already searching. You're trying to look for something. And then you you pick John the Baptist because you think that John the Baptist got a ministry that interests you. You pick John the Baptist because you like miracles. So you say, OK, this is a miracle working man. So I'm going to sit underneath him. That don't mean it's the will of God. Oh, this person talk about prophecy, Bible prophecy. So I'm going to sit underneath him. So you oftentimes people pick John the Baptist. 
Because the person had fit something that you was interested in. You want to hear about the Hebrew feast. They talking about the Hebrew feast. So you connect with them and say, this is, I'm going to sit right here because they talk about the Hebrew feast. That's what go on. But when the Holy Spirit, he giving you a chance to come into eternal life, he'll press his agenda right in your face. He'll press his agenda right in your face because he, he ain't going to be no excuses on their judgment. On the day of judgment, you ain't going to be talking about, I didn't know. God going to be like, how do you didn't know? I actually told you through the body. <laughs> I spoke to you through the mouth of the body. The body actually told you. I didn't know. Say, 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 say another word. I didn't know that this was supposed to be. I want to read this to you. It's talking about receive my instruction. Let's go to uh, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 10. Receive my instruction and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. What does this mean? Silver is money. Gold is money. It's talking about provision. That's why hey God 2 8 and on the silver and gold is mines. So it says receive my instruction and not money. Receive knowledge instead of money, large money. So what is God telling you here? He focuses on two things to prepare you for money coming. Instructions and knowledge. Wow. So how do you know how rich you're going to become? How do you know that now you're in the financial power of the spirit and the wealth power of the spirit? And now you, you, you are in that place of wealth. How do you know? How do you know that you're officially in that place of wealth? Let me show you something. Because now God is able to give you instructions, instructions about who you're around, instructions about where you go. He can instruct you. And, 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 and not just that he can instruct you, but you're pursuing his instructions. You're asking him questions. You're asking him, Lord, give me the truth. I want the truth. I want to know what is your will. I want your will. You're a pursuer of instruction. And you're also a pursuer of his knowledge. You're letting him teach you what is truth. You're letting him teach you what Christmas is. You're letting him teach you what the New Year's is. You're letting him teach you what Easter is. You're letting him teach you what, 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 what Valentine's Day is. Everything. You're letting him give you the interpretation. Is this of me or is not of me? So there's two things, instructions and knowledge. This is the combo that confirms money cometh. That you're about to live a rich and wealthy life by the power of the Holy Ghost. 